the Colonial Pipeline hack, or rather, the Colonial Company hack. A few of you have been asking me to cover this story, and basically, there was a ransomware attack on Colonial over the weekend. So this company is responsible um, for the pipeline that supplies about 45% of the gasoline, diesel, and other fuels to the east coast of the United States. Now, unfortunately, there really isn't a whole lot of technical details that have been publicly announced about this hack, which honestly is kind of strange. Uh, usually, there's a little bit more technical information about what exactly happened, but DHS is claiming that Colonial hasn't actually shared all of these technical details with them yet. Uh, and I wanted to read the official statement um, from Colonial about the hack on their website, uh, because the news articles that I've been reading about this so far, they've only been taking quotes from it. They haven't just given the entire statement, um, but their website appears to be down as well. I don't think that really has anything to do with the hack, though. If anything, it might just be due to uh, too much traffic because there's probably a lot of other people like me that want to learn more uh, accessing this website that would have never accessed it before for any other reasons. Um, but the pipeline shutdown, it really appears to be more of a countermeasure to the hack that happened. Um, Colonial, they basically didn't want the ransomware to spread because typically with attacks like this, what we're going to see is that the hackers will have some type of worm propagate the malware across many different devices um, that are on their network and possibly even jump to other networks. Um, so the victim in this case is involved in infrastructure, right? Various fuel pipelines. And these type of things are usually gonna be running on a SCADA network. Uh, and there usually is going to be an air gap between uh, devices that are running on that network and the regular networks that the company has. Um, so the fact that the pipeline itself was shut down as a countermeasure, that really makes me think that the devices that actually did get compromised by the ransomware were pretty close to the pipeline infrastructure itself. Uh, maybe it could have been on a technician's laptop. Now, I know... Uh, with some of these industries, not all, and I can't speak for Colonial directly, um, but usually there are technicians that actually work in the field with this type of stuff. They'll usually have two laptops. So they'll have one that they're going to plug into the infrastructure or basically the laptop that I guess you'd say touches the infrastructure. And then they have another one that they use for email, uh, all those kind of things. Because like I said, you want there to be an air gap. You don't want anything that's going to be on the internet or touching the internet to then go and touch uh, these critical infrastructures. But regardless of the mitigations that Colonial hopefully had in place, uh, this still appears to be the most disruptive infrastructure hack that has ever taken place on US soil. There's only but so many oil reserves that are available on the east coast of the U.S. Uh, now, in terms of oil that's actually extracted here in the United States, most of it comes from Texas, which is where this pipeline actually starts. It's pulling oil from Texas over to, I think, New Jersey uh, on the east coast and then distributed from there to various other places. Uh, now, you might be wondering, why don't we just transport the fuel from Texas to the east coast in like oil trucks in the meantime. And the problem with doing that is it's way more costly and it's a whole lot less efficient than just a 4,000 mile pipeline, uh, which I think was able to have about a million gallons of like diesel or gasoline or whatever fuels flowing through it every single day. Um, even if you had like Elon Musk cyber trucks that don't need any gasoline uh, to try to transport it to remove the fuel costs, it's still going to be a whole lot less efficient. Um, even if you were to haul it in bulk, say on a train or on a, a tanker boat, it's still not as efficient as a pipeline. That's the whole reason why we use them. Um, now, just like everything else, if the supply goes down and the demand um, you know, stays the same or it goes up, the price is going to go up as well. And the price of gas has already gone up about seven cents in the past week. 
Uh, and we're probably going to see it go to like $3, maybe even a little bit more uh, before this resolution is put into place. Now, right now, the timeline that we're getting from Colonial is that the pipeline is going to be operational by this Friday. But if you couple that delay with the fact that so many people are going to be traveling at the end of May, and they might have already started traveling for Memorial Day, which is at the end of May, um, we're definitely going to be in for a little bit of a price hike on fuel for the rest of this month, uh, and possibly price hikes on other things as well, because you got to think, fuel... Uh, that's going to be used by everybody, right? It's going to be used by grocery stores whenever they need to transport food. Um, any other goods or services are probably going to involve fuel use at some point. So those suppliers are probably going to increase their prices so that they can maintain their revenue. Um, now, as far as who is responsible for this hack, the FBI is claiming that it's dark side. Um, so this is a Russian-based hacking group. Uh, that offers ransomware as a service, essentially. They don't um, you know, really go out and target companies on their own for different reasons. I think they might have been doing that in the past, but you know, these days they're mostly after money. Um, so it's all about customers that are paying them to go and attack somebody. Now, this hacking group, they do have some ethics. Um, I can actually show you guys them on their website. Uh, so here at the bottom, they basically um, list out their rules as for, to their customers as far as like who they will and will not hack. Uh, so based on their principles, they won't attack the following targets, medicine, um, only hospitals, uh, funeral services, education, nonprofit organizations, government sectors. Um, and they only are going to attack companies that can actually pay the requested amount and generally they want to go after larger companies. So they're not really trying to impact uh, like small businesses or medium sized businesses. They want to go after those like Fortune 500 guys that they can actually give a ransom of like a million dollars to and they're actually going to pay it because it would make sense for some of those companies to pay it. Um, now they did issue a statement uh, on their website as well um, about this. So about the latest news and again this kind of points to evidence that maybe it was dark side involved in it just because you know otherwise what else would they be talking about you could see that this was posted on may the 10th um so about the latest news this is the biggest hacking story that's going on right now uh we are apolitical we do not participate in geopolitics uh we th the english on this is a little messed up do do not need to tie us with a demand with a defined government and look for other our motives. Our goal is to make money and not creating problems for society. From today, we introduce moderation uh, and check each company that our partners want to encrypt to avoid social consequences in the future. Because um, yeah, they <laughs> they're basically saying that they don't want to hurt regular people. They um, sort of have like this Robin Hood mentality, and you see that a lot with uh, black hat groups where they want to not really impact average citizens, but they want to sort of like take from the rich and take from the powerful. Um, so obviously, this does impact regular people, right? Because gasoline has already gone up seven cents. Uh, basically, everyone is paying for gasoline, right? People drive to work. Uh, a lot of people, they drive for Uber and things like that. Like, that's their business. So obviously, if fuel prices go up, that affects their bottom line. The part about them mentioning that they're apolitical also leads me to believe that they're referring to this event and taking responsibility for this event as well. Uh, because let me tell you, when I was researching this so that I could make the video, basically every like news agency or at least mainstream news company uh, has already put a political spin on this story. There's so much political horseshit already mixed into this. Uh, but I guess it makes sense, right? You've got a you know scary Russian hacking group that's affecting the price of gas in the United States. So I guess I should have expected the Normie News Network to put a political spin on it. Um, now, Dark Side is not state sponsored, from you know what I can see, and as far as we know and the evidence, um, you know even themselves stating that they're not state sponsored. Uh, 
I saw some news agencies originally saying they were, like when these story first broke over the weekend. But I think at this point, most of them have retracted that. And they're basically just saying like, yeah, it's a, a hacking group based in Russia, which is probably still true. Like Darkseid, when they originated, you could see them uh, posting on various Russian hacking forums and like Russian language based um, hacking forums and technical forums. Um, so yeah, probably not state sponsored, but probably still Russian. Um, now, the fact that a whole lot of information about the hack itself isn't available yet, again, still seems kind of suspicious to me because, um, you know, as you guys know, we usually get technical details about hacks like this pretty early on. Um, so I have seen some people floating the idea that this whole thing, like this whole hack might just be a false flag, like it didn't really happen. And it's just a cover for raising fuel prices. Um, Cause if you know about, um, you know, like US politics, as far as uh, how it goes with oil, it's changing around a little bit. Like the last four years in the United States, this country was actually a net exporter of oil because we had changed a lot of the uh, rules and regulations as far as like what you can and can't do to extract oil. So we had so much of it, uh, we started selling it off to other companies or to other countries rather. Uh, and now it sort of seems like we're gonna go back to our old method, which is uh, not producing a lot of our own oil and starting to uh, import oil from other countries. So that's where a lot of the political spins um, that are coming around the story uh, are sort of coming from. I don't know for sure. It does seem very convenient, you know, the fact that it's like Russian hackers um, basically messing with gas prices, but I'm not going to say anything for sure. Uh, until more information comes out. I'm just passing along to you guys what I've seen so far.